All right, friends, welcome again to another Ask Abante. So we have a question from uh, Reed here. Um, how are we as rational modern people supposed to regard all this supernatural stuff like gods and devas and other realms and rebirth and kama? Was belief in them considered important by the Buddha as a facet of the path? Can one become a stream enter or even an arahant without belief in them? So <clears throat> this is a good question, right? Uh, so there's two factors that I see, and I saw this in myself as well. So there's two factors, like for a Westerner, when they come to Buddhism, um, that kind of can cause them to be um, a little hesitant on these factors. The first is, uh, that they've come from a, like the Christian religion, they were raised in it, um, you know, the Christian religion or one of the Judeo, uh, one of the Ab Abrahamic religions where they kind of, you know, are like in this phase, you know, either militant atheist or agnostic, you're like, ah, oh, I don't want to deal with all these angels and all these, these beings, right? So you're kind of coming from this like, ah, oh, been there, done that, now I have to deal with it here. Um, and then there's the, the other end of where it's like, oh, like the kind of scientific materials are like, oh, these, these is all made up spaghetti monster BS in the sky kind of stuff, right? So you have these two kind of, <clears throat> you know, uh, at least from my understanding and my perspective, <clears throat> these two kinds of ways that a Westerner kind of will come in um, into this experience, right? And so it can be a hard thing. It can be a hard thing to kind of um, to go over, right? Because you you know you might think, well, like I I left you know my religions because of this, and now I have to deal with it here again. And that's the case, right? The case is that the Buddha is very clear that there are many many different forms of existence, right? That's the important thing to understand this about. These are not like special beings somewhere else, right? These are beings in samsara, just like us. So wherever, you know, this is just another form of existence. Like you can be a human, you can be a dolphin, you can be a, um, you know, a human, a dolphin, a what, an, an anteater, an otter, whatever. You can be a, you can be a spider. All these, you know, hundreds of, if not millions of types of beings, just in the material, uh, you know, the rupa material form uh, on the earth, let alone what other kind of beings, right? So there's, when you think of it in that way, <clears throat> you can understand, oh, okay, well, it's just another form of existence, right? Um, you can also think of it like, you know, there are times in the, in the practice where you just have to shelve things. You just have to put them aside, right? Um, does the Buddha talk about under right view? Does he talk about, you know, really understanding and knowing and believing that there are beings that are spontaneously reborn like devas? Yes, of course. It's part of right view, right? But our journey our uh, Adiya Pariyasana, our noble quest of this Noble Eightfold Path is to develop right view. We don't have it right off the bat, right? So things, it's best to just shelve it. Just say, well, you know, this is not really kind of part of my practice. It doesn't really affect my, or impact my practice right now. Why don't I just shelve it, right? <clears throat> now, it's important, I think, to keep an open mind. Right, there's a difference between, uh, it might be just made up, I'm kind of agnostic about it, and this is a bunch of stupid BS, blah, 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 blah. Like this kind of like toxic uh, skepticism, right? Like that is not going to help you. That's not going to help you. As a matter of fact, as you, if you actually follow this path, and if you actually really start getting deep in your meditation, that's going to actually kind of cause a lot of cognitive dissonance. Because the, the path kind of, the deeper your insight, the more you question things, 
right? The more you question, like you thought you were so certain things were a certain way. And then that certainty starts to get eroded. It's like, well, uh, right? <clears throat> and so you get, you know, for me, as somebody who kind of has a dichotomous mind, I have a mind that like wishes that I could, you know, be a wizard and cast fireballs. And I have a, the other part of my mind is extremely scientific, extremely rational, right? So I kind of have this merge of, um, and I think that's kind of part of what being a human is, is, is understanding this merge between kind of like the, the fantastical and the rational, right? So, you know, this is something that's also important to understand is like nobody's forcing you to believe these things, right? You don't have to believe these things to be a Buddhist. You know, it's not like, oh, well, you're not a Buddhist if you don't believe it. No, it's just practice, just practice. The other aspect that's a, <clears throat> that you can um, understand that might help you with is when we practice metta. Right, metta is apamana, limitless. It is limitless goodwill, limitless friendship, limitless friendliness for all beings, right? And if you start kind of limiting that, well, it's like, well, I mean, these beings don't exist, so who cares about them? Or these beings over there, I don't like, you know, who? then it's not real metta, right? So it's very important, I think, to have an open mind, right? Just to be agnostic. You know, you, you don't have to believe, but nor should, but having this kind of militant, toxic skepticism uh, is not helpful either. It's not going to help you. It's going to just make things worse for you. So in my opinion, for these things, it's best to just kind of keep it open, keep an open mind, right? You don't have to think about it. You know, you don't have to overly fret about it at all. I mean, like, you know, I, I, I did it. I just, well... You know, this is, I don't know. I've not seen it for myself. I don't have the Dhamma eye or the Dhamma ear. I can't see or talk to these devas, right? But as my confidence in the Buddha's teachings grew, I just, you know, accepted it. It's like, I've not seen it for myself. So I, I guess there's a little bit of faith. I mean, um, at least I've, uh, what do they call it? I've ex accepted the hypothesis, right? I've not experienced it for myself. So I don't know if it's 100% true, but, you know, I like to give, I, when I give my metta, I give my metta to the devas and the yakas, and I like to, you know, just think uh, peaceful and happy thoughts about these beings, right? Especially the yakas, which is an inside joke in the Magaseka community with me. I'm uh, My name in the, in the Discord sangha is called Yakara, uh, Yakaraja, <laughs> king of the yakas. Right, because I have this thing for yakas, because I think they're very misunder uh, uh, misunderstood. Right, they're they're kind of seen as these big evil demon ogre orc kind of beings, and then you see a sutta where an, a yaka mother brings her yaka children to listen to the dhamma from the Buddha. It's like, oh no, it's not. <laughs> There's no being in sangsara that is pure bad or pure good. Right, that's important to understand. So let's see, just let me look at the question here. Continue. Keep an open mind. As it was belief in them considered important by the Buddha. Yes, because as I explained, right, it's part of right, um, right understanding. It's part of right view, right? That we, that we have um, this understanding that there are beings, all kinds of beings and all kinds of ways of existence, right? In this universe in this samsaric existence, right? All kinds of beings in all kinds of ways of existence. Um, so we should understand this and we should have metta for these beings. Can one be a stream enter, even arahant, without belief in them? Arahant, no. Um, stream enter, possibly. Um, again, it depends on what you mean by belief, right? You know, if you, you, you know, you're not going to, unless you, you there's some being like Venerable Sariputta, for instance, Sariputta never could speak or see or any, anything with Devas because he, he was the foremost in wisdom, but he had no psychic powers, no cities whatsoever, right? 
So, um, but he understood and he, and you know, he, from his wisdom as an Arahant, he knew that there are such beings because he, you know, you can see the coming, the, the coming to birth and death of beings in this, that cycle. But, um, as somebody who is a stream enter, uh, again, you have this kind of faith because there's no doubt in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha, right? There's, your, your doubts are gone. So again, maybe you haven't seen it for yourself. And maybe it's, again, not that important, right? But you have, you know, you've seen Nibbana, a glimpse of Nibbana for yourself. There's no more doubt, right? There's no more kind of um, attachment to identity view, right? I am human. I am Deva, I am Yaka, whatever, these kind of things, right? Um, so I suppose then, uh, I, I guess you could say possibly, and this is kind of getting into the weeds of, of mental belief and mental states and things like that. Um, there's, as far as I can understand, as far as I know that I'm recalling right now, there's no specifics about this specific topic and stream enters in the suttas. So it's kind of, mostly conjecture but um so it depends on what you mean uh, how far you want to go with the no doubt thing right you can have a confidence right the you know the buddha says you know i have strong confidence in the buddha um you know i have no more doubts in the buddha the dhamma and the sangha and if the buddha tells us this then perhaps it's true uh, but i haven't seen it for myself so let's see i think that's the end of this question that's quite a long Ask Abante, but it needed to be. This is a pretty big question. So again, just to kind of summarize, nobody's forcing you to believe these things. You don't have to believe in them, right? Uh, so the second is keep an open mind. Don't have a closed mind. Just keep an open mind, right? Because that, that open mind will help you in a variety of different ways on the practice. Trust me. Trust me, if you keep a closed mind and you have this kind of very closed, militant, skeptic mind, it's not going to help you. It's just going to cause lots of co cognitive dissonance and you're not going to really be able to advance on the path because you're not going to be able to open up. Um, so keep that open mind. And with that, friends, I wish you a very spiritually successful and peaceful day. Sukihotu, may you be happy. Practice well and be well. Until the next Ask Abante.